thing. <laughs> Cohort five. <laughs> It's so nice to be here. Um, it's like a reunion of sorts. Um, and it's also a very exciting day for me in particular because I'm starting a new career path. So today, I begin as an adjunct professor to cohorts eight and nine. <laughs> um, so very excited about that. Um, and I look forward to meeting you guys and talking about all things omni-channel marketing with uh, Greg Maloney, but to, yes, where's Greg? <laughs> um, but today, you know, when Anthony asked me to speak a few short days ago, uh, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I have to prep for this class, and now I have to think about what I'm gonna talk about. I did to talk about leadership. Um, it's become a big passion point for me. Um, because it's important. And, um, and I'll get a little bit into what we think leadership means and what it is. But I decided to take my 28 years of experience in media um, and really talk about how leadership helped me grow. Um, it took me about 22 years to go from an intern at Univision all the way up to being a SVP, a senior VP of the agency. And you know, people always asked me, What's the secret? What's the secret to success? What made you, you know, get to where you are? And the truth is that, yes, hard work, determination, focus, all those things that we know we should be doing. But in reality, it also took gumption, fearlessness, and leadership at every single level, okay? So that's what I'm gonna talk about today, and uh, hopefully this thing, where do I point it? <laughs> How annoying, it's the green button, right? Thank you. Um, so you're all master marketers. So today, I want you to walk away thinking that you're a master leader, okay? There's a little Star Wars reference in there too, you know, in case anybody likes Star Wars. <laughs> um, so what's our perception of leadership? The suit, the tie, the, you know, in the case of females, nice, you know, killer outfit. Anything with a C title, right? CEO, CIO, MO, FO, CCO, oh, there's so many C's. Um, executive directors, the acronyms, right? EVP, SVP, VP, right? Because um, <laughs> it's all about acronyms. But what's the official definition of leadership? And hopefully this will pop up, the animation. Oh my God, it didn't work. Okay. Official position or function of a leader, a person who guides or directs a group. But the second definition is the ability to lead. And that is what I wanna talk about today. So how do you do that? Here's a pseudo org chart, okay? And you see, uh, you know, obviously, uh, let's say the CEO and the high level executives, mid level management, all the way to the front lines. There's issues with audio here, obviously. So it's better if you're in this position, this one, this level, this level, or this one is a master of our domain. Each one of us is being held accountable. You wanna check the audio? Okay, thanks. You hear me? Okay. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Each one of us is accountable for something, regardless of our position, regardless whether we're an intern, a production assistant, um, you know, a, um, a manager, a supervisor, a coordinator. We are each being held accountable for something. We are each masters of our domain, which means that we have the opportunity to exemplify and demonstrate leadership. So the big question, well, how do I practice leadership, right? If I'm like just whatever, an intern, a coordinator. Well, let's start with some, with some lessons. And by the way, these are lessons that I learned in my career through blood, sweat, and tears, lots of tears, and literally some blood. Um, so, so really, it's just coming from a place of my personal experience, OK? First off, don't be afraid. How many of us have been afraid in a job environment? 100%, seriously, all of us in this room. Um, be courageous, be bold, take risks. And the thing is, it's okay to be afraid. The key is to face that fear and to just move forward and just go for it. 
and face failure firsthand right in front of you. It's okay. Even if you fail, just you fall down, you come right back up. It's okay. But be courageous. Be bold. And remember, your career path, there's no rule book for it. The corporate ladder that we all envision, it's not a straight line. It's actually a zigzag, okay? So you're going to find yourself in a fork in a road where you have to make a decision. Take the decision that's bold. Make the decision that's bold. And you will see that it's going to pay dividends, okay? Next one. I'm sure you guys have heard of this, right? Don't be the problem, be the solution. There's... <laughs> Your boss is managing a million other things, and what they're expecting of you is to be the solution person, to find a solution in the middle of chaos. You know, life is always going to have problems. There's always going to be problems in life and in work, okay? Don't be the employee that huffs and puffs at the desk, that rolls their eyes in meetings, crosses their arms, complains at the water cooler. Just, you know what? It's not going to get you anywhere. Be that employee that thinks about a solution for a problem that may be occurring. Whether it's a team problem, whether it's a facilities problem, whether it's an AV problem, like what just happened to me, be that person to come up with the solution. And you'll find that you're gonna feel better about yourself and you're also gonna be perceived as someone who's a team player. Don't limit your possibilities. Be abundant in your thinking. Think big. Think outside the box. Or in the case of this photo, which I thought was so cool, outside the goldfish bowl, right? Um, you know, don't limit yourself in, in what you can do with your career, with your future, with your current position, even if it's not what you wanted at the time, but it's what you got. It's okay. Take it to the next level. Take it, you know, your, your, um, your position is your own, and you can make it as big or as small as you want. It doesn't matter what position you hold. Be abundant. Think big. Think big for yourself. Think big for your team. Think big for the company you're in. And it's going to pay dividends. And even when we have those crazy lofty pipe dreams, what's important to remember is that they're pipe dreams, right? Sometimes we need to be rational, right, um, and pragmatic. But sometimes the best concepts, marketing strategies, campaigns, ideas come from those big lofty ones. So always, always be abundant in your thinking for your growth. Don't limit yourselves or your possibilities. How many of us have done this? Speaking of thinking, <laughs> Kristen, you're the only one who does this apparently. <laughs> um, sometimes we overthink, right? And we just overthink, and we overthink, and we overthink. And the voice in our heads is so loud, and it becomes a reality. And then we start reacting on this reality that's not really a reality. It's just a novella that we created in our head, right? Um, <laughs> that's a very dangerous proposition. And what ends up happening, too, is that we paralyze the analysis, par paralysis by analysis. We just overthink something to death. We drive ourselves crazy, we drive our colleagues crazy, our families crazy, and we don't take action. Don't overthink. Instead, take a look at the situation, be rational in your analysis, right? Take emotion out of it, take a look at things very pragmatically, and then make a decision. What's important is to move forward. Don't paralyze yourself. Analysis. Paralysis by analysis is not a good thing. In your personal life as well, by the way, professional and personally speaking. This one's one of my favorites and it's actually kind of hard to do. Find your voice. So what does that mean? It's important because it's attached to your brand, okay? And I know because I did it myself, you guys have all, with the exception of the, the new ones that are coming in, you guys have all done a kajillion personal brand exercises in every single class. You have to do a personal brand exercise, right? Finding your voice is very, very linked to your brand. And what do I mean by that? How do you express yourself? How do you conduct yourself when you're asked to be in a meeting? How do you 
um, conduct yourself with your boss when you have to pitch something or give an idea or with your colleagues just walking down the hallway, right? You have to find your voice. And it's interesting because a friend of mine told me this a long, long time ago. I was petrified. This was many years ago. I was, um, I was, still, I was a director and um, leading creative for um, what's called an upfront presentation. The broadcast networks go to New York and they present all their upcoming programming for the following year to marketers such as yourselves. And it's a huge event. And for the first time, our president wanted each of us to present our creative before we went into production. That was never done before. And so I had come up with a crazy cockamamie idea on how to present novellas to this audience of marketers. And I was so nervous and I was so scared and oh my God, I have to present this to Ray and uh, you know, it was the first time I was gonna do this. And this friend of mine told me, listen, if you're invited to a dinner party, you're expected to eat. So if you're invited to a meeting, you're expected to participate. And I was like, oh, that's true, <laughs> okay. And then I had this inner voice that was driving me crazy, right? Like I was saying before the analysis by paralysis in this particular situation. And then I said to myself, yeah, I was invited to this meeting. I have a really cool presentation and I'm just gonna go for it. What's the worst that can happen? And you know what? It ended up being amazing. He loved it, we did it, everybody laughed and you know, the rest is history. But it's important to find your voice. So just remember that. Whenever you walk into a conference room and you're nervous about participating, just remember, I was invited to be here. Now, what's important here is to develop emotional intelligence. What does that mean? Read a room, okay? So don't just be the eager beaver and speak up at the worst possible moment. No, that's not gonna be good for you. You have to be able to read the room, understand the circumstances, and then based on that, you speak up when it's appropriate, you speak up at the right time, to the right person, et cetera, okay? I love this one too, because we all do it, right? Don't compare yourself. Trust in your abilities. We all do this, we all do this. We're always looking over our shoulder. Oh, so-and-so got that really sexy, cool project. Oh, why is that person, you know, always in the boss's office and they have such a good relationship? Oh, why is, you know, so-and-so getting the promotions that I wanted? Don't worry about any of that stuff. Focus on you. Focus on your universe. Focus on how you need to conduct yourself. Trust in your abilities. Each and every one of us is uniquely special. Each and every one of us has a gift. Each and every one of us brings something different to the table. So just focus on that. Trust in what you offer, what you bring to the table, and that's going to make you feel better about yourself, and it's going to give you that gumption that you need to keep moving forward. So speaking of trust, build it. Build trust. Be trustworthy. Be that person that people look to and say, oh yeah, I can trust her. I can trust her with this confidential information. I can trust her with this important project. I can trust him to take care of this, to do this analysis. Be trustworthy. It is pivotal. Trust is pivotal. There's a bunch of studies on this too, and there's a book and everything about trust in the workplace. In the same way that employees need to be able to trust their managers and their senior managers all the way up to the CEO, the reverse is true. They need to be able to trust you. And if you're not that trustworthy person, I don't care what you do, I don't care how many numbers you crunch, chances are you're not the one that's going to get promoted. Trust is key. And that's how you elevate yourself and others. And speaking of trust and values, don't compromise your values. This is, this is a big one. This is huge. Um, and as you, as you grow in your career, you may find that you're going to be challenged in this regard, where you may be asked to do things that go against your core values. You know what? Stop and question it. Just question it. If it's making you feel really uncomfortable, then voice it. And if it's something that's constant, you may have to walk away. And that's a decision you may have to make. But the truth of the matter is there's nothing 
nothing more valuable than to be able to go to sleep at night knowing that you operated with integrity, that you operated with your core values, because there's nothing worse than doing something that goes against that. Nothing worse, and there's no amount of money that's gonna ever justify being unethical. Be curious, be inquisitive. Our first speaker said that, right? He's saying, you know, a good marketer is inquisitive. Good leaders are inquisitive too. The best leaders are the ones that hire people that are smarter than them. They want to be the dumbest one in the room. And from experience, I can tell you that that gave me such peace knowing that my team was 10 times more creative than I was because they were going to go out and solve the problems. I couldn't do everything. So, but at the same time, since I wasn't the expert in every single piece of the process, I had people that were. And the worst part is to pretend to be the imposter, that you know everything. Because you know what happens? People read right through that. They'll see right through you. And then you don't get the respect. You don't get the credibility. It goes back to the trust. They won't trust you. Mm. This girl's shady. This guy's shady. Mm. You know, <laughs> it's true. It's true. So ask questions. Be honest. Hey, I'm not really sure how to do this. Like what Hector was just explaining a minute ago. Good Lord. I was backstage going, oh, my God. I, you know, that's awesome. That's, there's people like him, and I'm sure there's a lot of you like that. You know that you're all about numbers and credit. That's great. You don't have to be that way, right? So ask the questions. Be honest. Say, I'm not familiar with this. What's the best way to get this done? Those are the best leaders. Okay, and this one I know is not going to be very popular, but just bear with me. Um, consider the reality of your boss. Why do I say that? Because we're all guilty of it, myself included. <laughs> As I look at the professors. <laughs> no, but all kidding aside, it's like, oh my God, she asked me to do what? Oh my God. God, that's so unreasonable, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't he make that decision? Why did she go in that direction? Oh my God, she's driving me crazy. Da, 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 all those things. We've all done it. It's part of life. And you know what? It's okay. You vent, but you have to move on. Here's the thing. When you find yourself on the other side of that desk, and hopefully all of you will, and it's a wonderful thing, but I'm telling you because it happened to me. When you find yourself on the other side of that desk, the reality is a different one. It is a big responsibility. There's a lot of things that you have to answer for. There's a lot of decisions that you have to make that you may not necessarily have made them, but the business is calling for you to do it. Um, there's a lot of loneliness in, in high-level positions because at the end of the day, the buck stops with you. And so I bring this up because it's important to have compassion and empathy for those people that are sitting in those roles, even if they're not the nicest people, even if you're like, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's going to bring you peace. It's going to bring you joy, and it's going to help you remain focused, okay? And yeah, I, I love this picture because this hap I used to do this a lot too. I was just standing by the window and just looking out the window and hoping that I would get divine inspiration from some bird or squirrel or something, but, um, <laughs> but it's true, it's true. So. And just consider that reality because it can be very, very difficult. Some other thoughts. Leadership is not given. It's earned. It's not like you're going to go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow morning and boom. Oh, my God. I'm like a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. No. You, <laughs> you have to demonstrate your leadership abilities all throughout your career. And then that's when people are gonna look at you and that's when people are gonna consider you for leadership positions. So I would always say this to my team, guys, it's not given, it's earned. You gotta earn it. You gotta work towards it. While you're waiting for that promotion, find leadership in other areas. Volunteer for a community organization. They have boards, they have advisory councils, they have committees. Maybe you could be the head of the gala committee, you know? <laughs> and let me tell you, it'll help you 
practice leadership skills, making decisions, putting yourself out there. And then once your boss hears or finds out that, oh my God, she's, she's a junior board member, he's a junior board, he's on this board, uh, you know, they start seeing you differently. It starts becoming part of your brand, it starts becoming part of who you are, right? Going back to the voice thing that I was talking about before. So consider things like that because that also helps you in building that credibility and that reputation. Learn to advocate for yourself and for others. So what do I mean by that? Get an elevator pitch together. You never know when you're gonna bump into the right person in a building and you're in an elevator literally with this person. You've got all of 60 seconds, maybe less, 45, to come up with what I do, what I'm good at. Come up with the elevator pitch. In your day-to-day, -day, if there's opportunities for you to you know, demonstrate to your boss what you've been able to accomplish, let's say in your, in your annual performance review, right? Make sure you have metrics for success. What are the things that you've done, you know, that they're actually tangible? It's not just like, oh, but I want a promotion just because I want it. No, you can't do that. Like, <laughs> you have to demonstrate what are the things that you've been able to accomplish. And in your day-to-day, -day, advocate for others. If the team came up with a great, I don't know, campaign, um, but there was this one person that was a rock star. We'll make sure that person gets the credit, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Elevate other people, and you're going to elevate yourself in the process. Find a mentor. Get coaching. Go to seminars. FIU has a great center for leadership. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. They, they, you should be getting emails from them all the time. They have great lectures, seminars, events. They're amazing on leadership specifically, that you can get really, really good nuggets of information. Mentoring is a wonderful, beautiful thing. Find a mentor. Find someone that you admire, that you admire their career path. Ask them, I admire your career path. I would love to learn more from you. Would you be willing to help me and guide me? Make sure that you have good chemistry with that person too and that that person is actually able to you know, dedicate the time because it does take time, the mentoring process. But it really does help it re and it never ends. M mentoring, you can be a CEO and still have a mentor. You should. And this one's my personal favorite. Always, always learn the lesson. What is the lesson that I have to learn today? Even if I was wronged, even if somebody backstabbed me and why they sent that email to the boss, complaining about me, blah, 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 you know, whatever it is, right? There's a lesson there. What is it? What could I have done differently? Turn it to yourself and think, what could I have done differently? What lesson did I need to learn? And this is so important in your personal life as well. This is where you grow. And by the way, and in those difficult moments, that is where you grow even more. When you're doing the victory lap, it's just adrenaline. Yeah, I won. You know, it's in those moments when you fail, when you're on the ground, where you're beaten, you feel it. It's like a kick in the gut. Don't wallow in the sorrow. Think about the lesson. What is it that I need to take away from this pain, from this moment? And then you pick yourself back up and you keep on walking and you keep on staying focused and you trust in your abilities and you're brave and you have integrity and you're abundant in your thinking. Okay? Now, before I click, although it takes forever to click, um, I started with the definition of leadership and after all these lessons and after all these years, I define leadership in one word. The drama effect is just went everywhere. <laughs> Leadership is service. That is what I've learned in 28 years. It's serving others. It really is. I used to joke with my team and I used to tell them, I work for you. I work for you. It was a running joke. The truth is, I did. I did. I was, in, I, I was faced with very difficult situations where I was in you know, I would go into meetings facing the C-suite and I had to advocate for 150, 200 people. I was serving them. Decisions that I would make about the department, I was serving my team. 
when I was an intern, I was literally serving. I was bringing coffee and stuff to the talent. <laughs> but you're always serving, seriously. A good leader is a leader who thinks about how they can serve, how they can serve their teams, how they can serve their colleagues, how they can serve the company, how they can serve the consumers. Leadership is service. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Um, I have a question. Um, I, I'm sorry, I don't uh, see you. How do oh. you, yeah, right here, Arena <laughs> from the online cohort. Um, how do you, um, as a woman, I know that it, usually when you look at the senior um, leadership of a company, it's usually males. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance that, like how, do you find your voice among all that men, especially in a culture like we're Latin, like where there is a lot of that difference between male and female? How do you balance that? That's a great question and it's a really hot topic um, lately in terms of female empowerment and things like that. You know, it's interesting because for me, I, um, because I grew in a world in my career of production, I was always surrounded by men. That was just the thing, and it was, and I became one of the guys, right? You know, I was one of the ones that was pulling cables as well and doing all sorts of things. Um, but you know, I think this is a very personal, oops, very personal opinion. Um, I think you just have to be good at what you do. I find that men will respect you just as much as women if you're good at what you do, if you're ethical, if you command respect, if you're trustworthy, if you deliver results. People will rely on you. I think if we start to focus on, you know, the, the gender inequality, which I know exists and I'm not blind to it, but I think if we start to hone in too, too much on that, then it becomes a detriment, you know? And so I was fortunate that I had male leaders that elevated me just as much as female leaders. So I, for me, it was very equal, you know? And it's just a matter of understanding. And it's not about women trying to be men. No, you're a woman, and you have a different thought process and a different psyche and all sorts of things, right? Just be good at what you do. Deliver results, and, and you'll see. It'll work out. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. My name is Paloma. I'm from Cohort 10. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I had a question regarding um, rising to a leadership level at a young age. I'm in a position where I'm in a group of three uh, young women, and I'm in the middle where I have a coworker who's been there a little bit longer than I have, and I've risen or stood out amongst our leadership, and it's kind of like a, we have a great uh, relationship and work uh, environment. However, there's a little bit of uh, envy or competition um, and I don't know how to balance it and maintain my confidence in a leadership role. You know, um, that happens a lot because there's a lot, of, um, there's a lot of insecurity. You know, we all have it. We all feel insecure. And it goes back to what I mentioned earlier about trusting your abilities, right? Um, so people that we work with sometimes have those insecurities. And so they lash out or they react in certain ways. I think, again, if, and that's why I mentioned earlier about advocating for others as well, because I think if people see that you are a team player and it's not just about you, it's about service to everyone else and service to the team, then people will start to let their guard down. You're not there to, you know, to hurt anybody else and you're not there to take anybody's job, but if you happen to get elevated and somebody else doesn't, it, it's okay. Somebody saw something in you that is the reason why you're getting that position. So now once you get it, now you gotta, you gotta live up to it, right? You gotta, you gotta fill in those shoes. And so I, I think it's just about being, honestly, just being genuinely a good person and just being a team player. And, and people start to let their guard down. Hi. Julio. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Full context, he's a former colleague of mine, so we're friends. Yes, Julio Morel. Why'd you, okay, Julio Morel, cohort four. 
<laughs> so you alluded to and consider the reality of leadership uh, to something that I want to ask, but I want to give it some context first. And that is, we look at leadership and a lot of people aspire to it to, due to the benefits and the prestige that leadership positions bring. But there's a dark side uh, and a challenging side to leadership. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping that you can talk a little bit about some of the most challenging things you face as a leader. That's a really great question. Um, speaking candidly, transparently, the hardest decisions and the hardest moments for me were sitting in a room and drafting a list of people that were gonna have to be let go. And that's a reality. That's a reality. Um, because you're impacting people's lives, literally impacting people's lives. And, um, you know, unfortunately, the business called for it. It had to be done. And not only then do you have to put pen to paper and make the call in a closed room, but then you have to face the person and tell them, I'm so sorry, it's, you know, your job is being eliminated. That's hard. And nobody prepares you for that. <laughs> no, nothing prepares you for that. It's, it's hard. It's very difficult. And that's why I brought that up, because there are a lot of things that are similar to that that are very difficult decisions that, that bosses have to make. You know? And for me, that was, I still carry that. It's very, very hard. Thank you for asking that. Anything else? Hi, good morning, Professor. I'm Sebastian Hi. Leon, cohort eight. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I have to get um, used to that title, yeah. <laughs> Professor. <laughs> First of all, um, I wanted to thank you for your quote for the co-branding assignment that you did back in November. I uh -huh. used to. Oh, okay, yes. So yeah. Oh, my that. God, I wrote so many of those, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, especially in your position as um, SVP of Consumer uh, Marketing for uh, Univision, yeah. how have you, you know, like, say you're in a room, you're in a meeting, you're putting together this really awesome marketing plan, but then you get a lot of, like, challenge from the client. How have you been able to kind of lead your team in a way that you can overcome those challenges and move forward and, you know, get the sale or the marketing mm, plan approved? That's a good one. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting because since we were an in-house agency, um, our clients were internal, right? But then we also had a group of people that worked with the sales department. So we were external facing, right? With the Hondas and, you know, uh, Fords and all sorts of clients um, externally. What's important is to make them feel like they're part of the process, like they're part of the creative ideas as well. Be open in the way that you present your ideas, be open to feedback. And, and, and it's like little words, you know, that as you're talking to them. So we had this idea that we wanted to share with you and wanted to get your thoughts on it. Just little, little things like that, that then make them feel like they're also participating in it. You know, and sometimes, listen, sometimes you hit it out of the park. And sometimes, wah, 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 you know, <laughs> things didn't go very well. But it's okay, you know, you just gotta go back to the grind, roll up the sleeves, throw the spaghetti noodles on the wall again, and let's see what sticks. But that's important, make them feel part of the process. And again, it, like what I was saying earlier, people let their guard down, you know? Make sure that you make people feel comfortable. Let their guard down and then it becomes a collaborative effort. You want them to be all in. You want them to buy all in because what you don't want is what Mark was mentioning earlier about being in a production shoot. You don't wanna be in a production shoot and somebody with some semblance of power says, you know, I really don't like that red couch. Why are we doing a red couch? What are you talking about? Oh my God, we've been talking about this for six weeks. Now you don't like the red couch? Where am I gonna get a blue couch? Like what the heck, you know? That happens. <laughs> so yeah, so just make sure that they're part of the process and that they give you buy-in from the beginning. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Can you reflect on the first time that you became a leader and share some advice for first-time managers? Okay, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> actually, thankfully, it was, I'm, I'm thinking because it's an, it's an interesting question. So. I was a show producer. I used to produce television shows, live shows. So even though I didn't have a leadership position per se, but I was a line producer, or I was in a control room, um, and I was responsible for the timing of the show, 
for you know the talent for everything all the last decision you know ma making that had to happen live and all of a sudden the first time that i started doing it everybody was looking to me talent lighting audio everybody what are we do what are we doing next journey where are we going next? and all of a sudden you feel so overwhelmed you know and then you just you just adrenaline kicks in and you just you know figure it out and you answer the questions and you make sure that you're secure in your answers so that everybody follows you right because if you start being wishy-washy in your answers and not decide if you sound like you're not decisive then you have chaos right so you have to sound very decisive then when I went into more of a managerial role thankfully I only had to oversee a couple of people you know so because managing people is hard by the way um, so for me it was interesting in learning the hardest part was the delegating, especially when you go up, when you, you know, raise up the ranks, you're used to being the one that does things. I typed everything in, I did the report, I did the PowerPoint, I did this, yeah. You have to, the hardest part is delegating and having someone else do it. And then if that person doesn't do it correctly, then you gotta guide them and what they did wrong, what they did right, how can they improve, right? So for me, that was the most difficult challenge was the delegating process. But it's important because it also demonstrates that you as a boss trust your employee. And then that gives that employee gumption and confidence to, to run and move forward with things. Thank you so much, Joni. Thank you Thank so you. much. Please Thank give her a everybody. round of applause. <laughs>